I took um, thyme. Rosemary. Uh, rosemary. And sage. And thyme. Sage. And sage. Sage. Yeah. Okay. Rosemary. 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 So, so what is this? Sage. 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 What is this? Rosemary. Rosemary. What is this? Thyme. Thyme. So it's, it's a very nice bouquet. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, kind of dig the middle out. We're going to leave about an inch to the side uh, in there. I'm going to put this in here. Lo que va a hacer es prácticamente excavar el centro de esta masa que tiene de mezcla y dejar un hueco ahí para poder rellenarlo. What I did is um, I put this in the refrigerator um, probably at about 9 o'clock this morning and I put a weight on it so that it would press it down. Es, 
queso, uh -huh. pero está utilizando este eh, tela que le dieron de África. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Entonces, so, la miel de leche. África flavor. <laughs> so, and when we get done, it should look like something um, like when we started, except a little fuller. Y prácticamente termina como comenzaron al principio, pero el relleno quedó debajo. So now. We just want to make sure that um, it doesn't stick. Lo que vamos a hacer es poner un poco del spray del aceite para que no se le pegue, evitar que se vaya a pegar. So, so now we're going to take this, we're going to um, flip it up. Now, in your recipe there, in la receta de ustedes, you have um, it says a third of a cup of red wine and a, a quarter of a cup of balsamic, bals say that, balsamic vinegar. Uh, I don't use red wine, even though that's a vegan thing. I just don't like all the fermentation. And so I, I kind of steer away from that. So what I did is... Um, no usa ninguno, ni el vinagre, ni el vino rojo que le chica ahí. Pero lo que hice fue... You did. I put in um, some peanut butter. I put in a quarter cup of peanut butter. Mantequilla de maní. Do we have it here, sir? No. No. Okay, so we need to write how much? Yes. Peanut butter. A quarter cup of peanut butter. So, you know, this, and peanut butter, I mean, peanut allergy is huge today. So you have to make sure that nobody's allergic to peanut butter because that, that's huge. And okay, then, mucha gente que son alérgicos al cacahuate, así que tengan cuidado, está utilizando un cuarto de una taza de, de cacahuatina. I put in a little bit of Dijon mustard, about um, a quarter of a cup. Un cuarto de taza de mostaza. And then uh, some sesame oil. A jonjoli. About two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. A quarter cup of water. Un cuarto de taza de agua. Dos cucharas de molí. Molido, es molido. No, un molí. You got the olive oil. Sesame oil. Oil, oil, oil. Sesame oil. Where is sesame oil? This is the base that's going on top. How much sesame oil? Two tablespoons. 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 Two tablespoons.
Now this has to bake for a long time. Esto tiene que hornearse por un tiempo largo. Two hours. Two wow. hours. At 350 degrees. A 350 grados. Se dan cuenta que metieron el pavo. Estaba desde apenas se descongeló. Okay. So it needs to be covered. Y necesita estar cubierto. With aluminum foil and then that's at the first hour. Con el aluminio por la primera hora. And then the second hour no aluminum foil. Y en la siguiente hora ya no se le pone el aluminio. So, um, let me uh, bring this back and then uh, talk about it. So I'll be right back. So, OK. En la receta se no está en el Sorry, I have a little question. Um, I've always thought that olive oil was more healthy than the canola oil, but recently at one of the seminars, my dad said they said canola oil is better than the olive oil. So which one is it? Okay, let me, let me tell you. The, well, not only the Food and Drug Administration, but it comes a lot uh, on the food industry. Who they try to push uh, in order for you to buy in the market. Uh, and they have tried to present that canola oil is a good oil compared to olive oil. But there is nothing better, and you can even see it. And the research has been found. People, for example, in Italy, even though they eat a lot of pasta, and even they eat a lot of flour, they don't have so much problem of diabetes and cholesterol like we do have because they consume more olive oil than we do, okay? Olive oil is better, but the only thing that we have said, olive oil needs to be cooked only in two ways, okay? Raw, or just cook it when you boil it, okay? Never fry it, okay? Never fry it. If you try to fry food with olive oil, it's better to use canola oil or any other type of oil because you're destroying the olive oil. Olive oil? Uh, olive oil is not being designed for frying, okay? It is very sensitive to the, to the heat. That when you go over 100 degrees, you start to destroy the change of the olive oil. So the benefit that the olive oil has will become harmful to you, okay? because it doesn't resist the heat. Mm. Okay, sesame seed oil is a good oil, but it's too strong that it will give you heart work. Okay? And another thing, uh, she was saying about grapeseed oil. We have already talked before, remember, grapeseed oil is an oil that resists the heat. It's an oil that you can use it to fry. And the same thing is an oil that is very strong. Know the taste. But the chain, at the moment that you eat it, is heavy, okay? And it's heavy as well for the wallet. Yes. Okay? I can tell you, it's heavy as well for the wallet. Yeah. A little bottle like that, probably 500 uh, milliliters, is around.
around 13, 14 dollars. Okay, so. What do you have to do coconut oil for if we want to do things higher? And as far as I can find out from studying it, it's supposed to be better for higher heat also. Yes, coconut oil coconut? is as well. Oh, the they call the dende, that is the small coconut one, uh, that you can use it. They give you a little flavor into the food. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't like it, and that's the reason they reject it and try to use other type of oil. But you know they are better. In other words, we should never fry it. Okay? First thing, we should never fry. And that's the main thing. Remember, the most simple way that we eat our food, the better. Yeah. Different culture using different kind of oil, like for Indian people use coconut oil. American people also use coconut oil or coconut or like some other country use the shortening oil and olive oil. Depends what you, Italian people use a lot of oil, olive oil. Depends what you, your stomach, your, your way you culture, the way you cooking the oil. Maybe sesame oil is good for me, but it may not surprise you. Say maybe it's too strong for you. You give it a habit, but olive oil is the easiest one for everybody. I mean, the other sesame oil, oh, there's another one also, they call it sunseed, sunflower oil. It's the best. Mm. It's very light, it doesn't bother your stomach or whatever, but it depends on everybody's, every country's, every culture is a different, okay. using different oil. Maybe coconut oil is for good for okay. me because I'm born and been habited to it, but for you it may not be. You know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. One of the things that we had mentioned, and the question that we didn't understand, is what was better, if the aceite of canola or the aceite of oliva? Le mencionaba a ella que el aceite de oliva es el mejor. No hay ningún mejor aceite que el aceite de oliva. No hay ningún otro mejor. Pero el aceite de oliva debe cons eh, consumirse crudo o cuando mucho cocido. ¿Ok? Pero nunca utilizarlo para freír. Porque el aceite de oliva se destruye. Y entonces los beneficios que el aceite de oliva produce, como bajar el colesterol, aumentar el, el colesterol de proteínas que están unidas con proteínas que no les gusta este, el agua y hacen que el colesterol se mueva más rápido en la sangre, este, no, no tiene ese beneficio cuando se fríe con eso. Entonces, eh, ella dice que con respecto al aceite, muchas veces tiene que ver con respecto a la cultura, dónde hemos crecido, qué tipo de aceite hemos comido, entonces eso es lo que nosotros vamos a adaptarnos. Y una de las cosas que hemos visto, que el aceite en sí, no deberíamos utilizar nada para freír, ¿ok? Desgraciadamente por cultura, muchas veces de nuestros alimentos tienen que ser fritos, ¿ok? Hemos aprendido, hemos desarrollado de que a través de nuestra cultura muchas de las cosas que comemos tienen que freírse. Y entonces, por base de la cultura, como les dijimos, si vamos a freír, hay ciertos aceites que resisten más al calor. Uno de ellos van a ser el aceite de, eh, de uva, okay, de semilla de uva, y el otro es el aceite de coco, y o, este, el otro aceite que resiste. Canola no resiste tanto al calor. Es un beneficio, es, poli, es, perdón, es poliinsaturado, son de los aceites que es de monoinsaturado, perdón, eh, pero no, este, no resiste tanto al calor. Son destruidos también, por eso ustedes ven que después cuando cierta temperatura se empieza a pegar. Yeah, the coconut gets solid, that's the reason it's fully insaturated, it gets hard. So, remember, that's why the recommendation is to eat the oil that is more liquid. Between more liquid it is, the issues to digest for your body. The hardest the oil it is, like for example, lard of the pork, you see, that is very saturated, uh, that's the reason they find getting it's hard, and what happens? The same way it gets hard and hard to be removed from the fat that you cook, what happens? In the same way, hard to be removed from your artery. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason later on it gets flooded. Me explicaba ellos que, por ejemplo, una de las cosas que a veces nosotros por cultura usamos es la manteca. La manteca, por ejemplo, muchas de las cosas, sobre todo, quiero decirle, la mayoría de los restaurantes aquí en el valle, ok, prácticamente no sé cuál, hasta ahorita no he probado ninguno, cocinan ya sea el arroz o los frijoles con manteca de puerco, ok, entonces, ah, y los tamales, la mayoría, por ejemplo, dalias, siempre es con eh, 
Y aunque sea de pollo, Elias. con manteca de puerco. Okay. O no importa dónde lo comen, va a tener manteca de puerco. Porque ya viene la masa preparada con manteca. Y ese sabor que le da grasoso o algo así, generalmente. Eso, de la misma manera que se tapan, ustedes visto que tienen que llamar al plomero para destapar la, los tubos de la, de la tubería, lo mismo acontece con las arterias de nuestro corazón. I just wanted to, um, I kind of rushed through that tofurkey, so I wanted to explain a couple more things. Me apuré rápido para hacer la preparación de este pavo de tofu, pero les voy a explicar más al respecto. Um, I used four cups, like it asked for in the recipe, of vegetable broth. This time I went and purchased some at HEB. Esta vez fui y compré en el HEB este eh, consomé de vegetales. <laughs> Um, stuffing, I used um, coral wheat. You just want to make sure on the stuffing that you get it where it doesn't have the, the meat products in them. A lot of stuffings today, they come and they're already seasoned. And they've got basically the blood of the chicken or the blood of the turkey in it. That's where they get the flavor. Eh, muy importante que ustedes vean si quieren sustituir completamente la carne o los productos animales. A veces el relleno que ustedes ya compran ya vienen con un poco del sazonado, ya sea de pavo o de pollo o el de res. Y lo que tiene es, cuando dice el broth progresivo, generalmente contiene sangre del animal. ¿Ok? Para darle ese sabor este, eh, del, del pavo, de la res. Y están ahí este consumiendo eh, en la sangre. So, Pepperidge Farm is a good, um, good stuffing to use. They, they have a... You know, it's basically just the breadcrumbs, and that's what you want because you want to season it yourself. I want to emphasize to use your own fresh herbs. Los invito también a utilizar sus propias hierbas frescas, les da mejor sabor. Y el relleno que sea de preferencia, un relleno donde sea simplemente las moronas del pan, donde ustedes lo puedan sazonar después y tener su propio sabor. When I when I use the You know, whenever you use fresh herbs, you need to use more because as they dry them out, they get more potent. Cuando usan eh, hierbas frescas, generalmente tienen que usar un poco más porque entre, cuando se secan, agarran su consistencia del sabor y son más potentes que cuando están frescas. So, if your recipe calls for like a teaspoon of brown dried um, rosemary, you'll probably need at least a tablespoon, if not more, of fresh rosemary. Si dice una cucharadita de eh, romero, tendrían que tal vez utilizar una cucharada completa de esas grandes eh, mesas eh, para sustituirlo con el cerebro. Now, what I do is I just take the leaves off of here because you have a pretty strong stick there. Prácticamente lo que hago es mover de la ramita las hojitas nada más porque hay algo firme. Um, and then I just dice it up and then uh, put it in. You can pass it. Uh, we used to have a uh, rosemary bush when I was working. No, no, he's using the whole thing. He's just passing back. I just want everybody to see it. And you can take a leaf off and eat it if you'd like. And this is nice to put in your salads too. I mean, it's very aromatic and it has a strong flavor. That's why we use it. Everybody remember what this is? Sage. Sage. Very aromatic when you start cutting it up in your kitchen. Somebody can help me to translate sage to Spanish? Salve. Salvia. Salvia. La salvia. Me lo presto para que te lo presto. Me lo presto. Me lo presto. Me lo presto. Me lo presto. Por ejemplo, o sinusitis, pueden utilizar el romero, hervirlo y agarrar el steam que donde está el agua evaporando y eso le ayuda a llenar los senos paranasales y disminuir el problema de alergia. Sí. 
O si tienen asma. Sir, can you tell me for her? Okay. Yeah. Another uh, topic on health that we can use a natural remedy is that rosemary, the one over here, if you boil it in water, the fresh one over here is the dry one. When you boil it, it is good to prevent uh, your allergy problems that you have and as well for sinusitis. It will help you to uh, decongest all your sinuses that you have and it will be able to drain out all the pressure that you have. What we need to do so Actually, you get all the steam that is coming out. If it's possible, you get a towel over when it's mm -hmm. coming out the steam and you get it all the drain. Excuse me? No, Rosemary. 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 Uh, actually, it's not recommended for you to drink it, but it's one thing it does in the, in the, in the complete treatment is after you get you get a small towel, you stuck it in the hot water that is get over there pink, get especially an old towel because it gets pink. And then after that, you get like a little uh, hot towel over your face, leave it over there, and it will be able to decongest even more. Better. Another way to do it is get a little bit of there is cooling down, get it over your head, and you can even go to sleep that way. And if you have any really severe problem with headaches, you to sinusitis, it will drain it up. Wow. So, um, whenever you can, use fresh. You know, like I've, I've always emphasized, the closer we can eat it to the way God made it, the better off we are. The more man messes with it, the more we mess it up. Eh, de la forma más natural y fresca que consumamos nuestras eh, especies, lo mejor, aparte, no solamente sirven de especies, pero también tienen sus eh, beneficios. Por ejemplo, como ya mencionamos, el rosero de también sirve para los cólicos estomacales. One of my uh, favorite, one of my most desired breads when I was making, working in a bakery in Northern California was a rosemary olive bread. And we had a rosemary bush right outside and I would just go outside and pick that off fresh, make sure there's no spiders or caterpillars on it, <laughs> wash it off and then use that right in my bread with some calamari olive. <laughs> Cuando estaba en California, lo que hacía es, fuera de California, yo donde trabajaba, había varias plantas de eh, romero, y lo que hacía es agarrar prácticamente el romero y hacer su pan con romero y... ¿Qué dijiste? Con la mano. Y Lo que se fijaba es que no hubiera ninguna arañitas ahí, ninguna eh, avispas para que así de esa manera pudiera utilizarlas. It's always good if you can plant your own because this I bought, but you know, I don't know how old it is. Obviously, it's still fresh because it, it would be brown, but they also flower, and the flowers are edible, and they're beautiful in your salad. You take, the uh, rosemary has a purple little bluish looking flower, it's a small little thing, and you can put those in your um, salads, and they're very um, delicious. You can eat them as well. Most of the time, when we see it in front of the house. De hecho, los rosemary tienen una florecita también y lo pueden poner dentro de su ensalada. O los seis también produce este, unas florecitas que son muy buenas también. Okay. Any questions? Time for green beans. She can't wait for the green beans. Oh, you cannot wait for the green beans. Okay. okay. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about pumpkin pie and other uh, holiday favorites. Ahorita vamos a hablar acerca de el pay de calabaza, otra cosa que es muy importante en la época de celebración de esta época nuestra. We need to have dessert, right? Yeah. Vamos a tener postre, ¿verdad? Okay. You can buy this in health food stores. 
pueden comprarlo en cualquier tienda naturista. Este sustituto de huevo no es para sustituir y le digan, bueno, voy a hacer un huevo revuelto si voy a utilizar este sustituyente de huevo. Principalmente es bueno como para cuando ustedes van a hacer eh, cocinar eh, postres, por ejemplo, el, pie de, perdón, el pan de plátano que ella hace o el, plan, el pan con un este pastel de zanahoria eh, o de calabacita. Where did you purchase that? At the health uh, store. I got it from Sprouts. Sprouts, I guess. That was some harvest before, right? And that one box lasts you a long time. You can use it a lot of times. Lo compró en Sprout, donde anteriormente era Sun Harvest, y una caja pues le dura por mucho tiempo. It is. No, it has no cholesterol, of course.
de agua. ¿Dónde está el plato? 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 Este tipo de tops, por favor, exprímalo o drenenlo el agua que tiene. 